Hello, everyone, and welcome to session two of Mothership, Dying Hard on Hardlight Station. Uh, my name is Mike, my pronouns are he, him, and I will be the warden or game master for tonight's game. Um, we are playing this game uh, on the Gauntlet calendar. Uh, the Gauntlet is an online role-playing gaming community. We run a monthly calendar. We run a calendar of open games. We run about 100 games a month of various sorts. We focus on indie RPGs, story games, and OSR games. Uh, tonight's game of Mothership is, um, it's an old, it, it's a new game. Uh, it's not a retro clone, but it does definitely fall into the OSR, um, into the OSR like category um, where the rules are, um, the rules are there, but uh, it might behoove our characters to try to avoid engaging them just because they tend to be kind of deadly. A little bit about myself. Um, I've been playing RPGs for a long time. Started back in the 80s. Um, mostly played a lot of trad, uh, trad games uh, until about 2015 when I fell into the story game pool. Um, my gateway was uh, Dungeon World. Um, had delved a little bit in OSR in the past couple of past couple of years, and I'm kind of very interested in the, the intersection of story games and OSR games. Um, but I'm uh, leaning a little harder into the OSR with this particular game. Um, I've been with the Gauntlet. I think I joined the Gauntlet, and I want to say in like late 2017. Um, played a couple of games and started GMing in 2019. Uh, let's go around the table and, and introduce our fine players. Let's go clockwise. Uh, Mark, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mark. I am playing um, Banks, the android. Uh, and uh, Banks is um, trained. Uh, her, her specialties are hacking, uh, linguistics, mathematics, anything kind of computer oriented. Um, very on the nose for an Android, I suppose. Uh, and, but that's who I'm playing tonight. I'm glad to be here playing Mothership. Awesome. Glad to have you. Gray, would you please introduce yourself? And you're muted. Is that better? Yes, yeah, we can hear you now. Great. Sorry, my Zoom has been wonky. Um, hi, I'm Gray. My pronouns are they, them. Um, and I am playing Olga. Um, <laughs> she is a scientist, a biochemist with a specialty in exobiology. Um, she is, you know, a little bit older. She's senior enough that she really could have her own lab by now, but she prefers to do field work, probably because she doesn't really like people. Awesome. Uh, very cool. Um, and Machinic, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Machinic. I'm playing Riggs. Um, his pronouns he, him. He's probably the odds on favorite to um, blow something up later. <laughs> I would say he's a teamster. Um, yeah, a year to play. Awesome. Um, for those who watched session one, uh, you may notice that we are missing a player. One of our players wasn't able to join us tonight. Um, we will be bringing uh, their character, Eddie, along as an NPC, um, at least until at such time I can have the character make a, a convenient exit. Um, I tend to prefer not to drag NPCs around, but uh, from a narrative perspective, it doesn't you know, we'll he'll be there. I'll just you know use him as we'll, we'll use him as needed as an NPC, and hopefully he will survive this session. Um, if you're looking at your character sheets, you may notice that uh, you now have a new high score. Everyone has a high score of one because that is a that is a new thing for Mothership First Edition. Um, Mothership got the first edition got rid of levels, <clears throat> and instead you now have a <clears throat> completely like well. Uh, you now have a stat that has that has absolutely no mechanical impact called high score, and that is the number of play sessions this character has survived. Doesn't come into play at all just for bragging rights. Um, let's see, a couple of mechanical game mechanics things that um, I thought about over the past week, and also there's there's one thing I believe I forgot to mention, and that is. Um, 
So this this mothership uses mothership uses um, percentile dice and um, zero uh, zero is low. So if you roll zero zero on percentile dice, that is that is low. So the the numbers go zero to ninety nine. The other thing is criticals in this game. If you roll doubles, doubles are a critical. Um, so if you roll doubles and you would have succeeded, it's a critical success. If you roll doubles and you would have and you would have failed the roll, that's going to be a critical failure. Um, I am enough of a story gamer that I think I'm going to experiment at least in this night's session to see how it goes. Um, where I am going to introduce a I'm going to introduce a mechanic that's not in the book, but I think it might be. Uh, but I think it might be, uh, I think it might be interesting. We're going to see how it goes as an experiment, you know, because I can't play a game that I've only played once and not experiment with it a little bit. If you miss, if you miss a roll by 10%, you can choose to spend a stress and, uh, and, and you can choose to spend one stress and succeed anyway. Uh, tell us like what extra effort you did to succeed, uh, but you got to be within ten percent. I just think that might be a little fun, um, and um, I think I might I think I might be calling that a partial. Oh, I take that back. It, 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 you can spend a stress and and accept a partial success. Uh, otherwise, you don't. Otherwise, uh, so yeah, I think that we're gonna try we're gonna try it out this session. We'll see if it works. If it works, we'll keep doing it. If not, we'll we'll stop playing with it, but you know, I can't, I can't not experiment with the game a little bit. All right, uh, we've introduced ourselves. Um, I wanna talk very briefly about safety, emotional safety at the game table. Um, we had a more extensive safety talk previous sessions. So I just wanna, just wanna really touch base. We're playing with, um, um, especially in a horror game, and this is a sci-fi horror game, um, using safety tools is very important. Um, it's a way that, we can focus on the fun and hopefully um, not go into places where we're not comfortable going. Um, each of us individually is more important than this game we're playing together. So in that light, we're using a, we're using a set of three layered uh, safety tools. Um, and in brief, uh, the first one we're using is called open door. And that just means we can all come and go from this game as we please. Anyone can call a break at any time. Uh, the second tool we're going to be using is a proactive tool called Lines and Veils. Um, in our previous session, we have established um, a set of you know, subject matters that we either don't want to engage with at all in this game or that we only want to engage with in very limited circumstances. Um, so I've got a list of those. Um, we, have it on our, we have it on our Safety and Resources tab on the Character Keeper. I've also copied that onto a stick note that's floating on top of all of my other screens. So I will hopefully not keep my eye, take my eye off of that. Uh, and third, we are using the X card and you can invoke the X card anytime something happens in the game that is making you uncomfortable. Uh, whether that's like in the game or whether that's at the table among players, anything that happens that you're not comfortable with, please invoke the X card. Uh, it can be something, you know, even if you think it's silly, if you don't like it, Say, you know, say the phrase X card, you make the X mark uh, on camera. You could type X card in the chat window. Um, that means we're gonna pause the game. We're gonna have a little chat to figure out what we need to change and we will change it. Um, and we'll, we'll figure out what we need to change. Yeah, you need to, we need to know what we need to change. You are under no obligation to tell us why. Um, if someone X cards something, um, we may ask a clarifying question, but we may not push back on that. Um, things you might want to X card. Um, you can also in, you can also invoke an X card if we seem to be heading toward a subject that is lined or veiled. Um, please, please do so. We're all human, and sometimes in our enthusiasm, we may take our eyes off the we may take our eyes off that. And if anyone notices, please, please, please immediately invoke, invoke the X card. We don't want to go in places that we've that we don't want to go. Those are our safety tools in a nutshell. Do any does anyone have any questions before we move on? Fantastic. And if anyone's watching this video and want a more, uh, want a more detailed uh, discussion of safety tools, please check uh, session one where we went into these quite a lot more detail. 
Okay, um, let's do a quick recap. So our characters um, were aboard. Um, did we ever name? Did we ever name the ship that you that you were on? I'm not sure if we did. Oh, that was an oversight on my part. Anyway, if anyone has any suggestions, please go ahead and uh, pop it into the chat window, and we will retroactively name name the ship that you are from. You are uh, your ship is docked in Hardlight Station. Um, Hardlight Station is a commercial space station, uh, which is run, owned, and operated by the Nakatomi Corporation in the Epsilon Eridani station in the Epsilon Eridani system, which is still several. It's it's close to Earth, but it's not right there. Um, you, it's uh, you, you're still going to have to make a couple of you'll have to make a couple of hyperspace jumps from here to get to, uh, from here to Earth. Um, there is a jump gate in this in this sector, so it's possible to go straight to Earth from here via the jump gate. But um, you know, some ships have their own hyperspace drives and would prefer not to pay the fees. Um, the system does not have any inhabited planets, uh, but there are several. Um, you know, I, I should say there there are no Earth-like planets in this sector, but there are. Um, you know, there are planets here. There are you know, there's like there's. They're basic, they're basically just like uh, the planets that are in this sector are pretty much just here to be mined. Um, there's there there are no habitable planets in this in this sector. Um, Hardlight Station is a not particularly big station, um, but it is somewhat prosperous in that it's it's here. It's near a jump gate. Um, a lot of ships pass through the system even if they don't stick for very long. Um, Hardlight Station um, is home to a few corporations. Um, uh, one is called Health. The, the big one is called Health Tech. Um, they're a, you know, they're a medical. They're a company. That, there is a Health Tech facility. Health Tech is a pretty big company that has um, has facilities all you know, all over inhabited space. This particular facility is. Um, it's primarily used for like biomedical research. Uh, they also run a they also run a, a, a pretty, fairly well equipped hospital here. So this is a so this is a station that will people will go to if you know if you if people need medical attention. Um, the Health Tech Hospital is kind of expensive, but it's it's a very good hospital. And again, they they run all kinds of uh, they do they do all kinds of biomedical research. And there's a couple of other businesses here. Uh, there's a hotel, there's a casino, um, and there's a few other smaller smaller companies. However, uh, you had docked. Uh, it is Christmas time. Um, you had, you had, uh, oh, okay, in the chat window, we have named our ship. Our ship is called the Argyle. <laughs> In honor of the limo driver from Die Hard, yes. Uh, viewers will any anyone viewing will note that uh, there are a number of ref there have been a number of references to the movie Die Hard. Uh, there will be a few other references to the movie Alien because uh, this kind of this this adventure was kind of billed as Die Hard meets Aliens in space. So the Argyle has docked here for repairs. Um, you're a little bummed that you're stuck in this station over Christmas, but you know, such as you know, such as life as a spacer, you were enjoying the um, you were enjoying the station-wide Christmas party in the atrium when um, a ship basically like rammed its way into the docking bay, and um, you heard some explosions, um, and a voice came over the PA system telling everyone to remain calm and to move calmly to their to their quarters uh, because and uh, and that the station was now under the control of the Black Shield corporate of, of the Black Shield Corporation. Black Shield is you you all know Black Shield. They are a notorious mercenary company. Um, they had been part of they had been sort of like the you know, they had been a security arm of a larger corporation, um, but they 
but after some very nasty business out on the rim, um, they've gone independent. And they are basically available to hire by the, uh, they're, they're basically available to hire and they are just, they are notoriously one, one rough bunch. People generally don't want to cross paths with Black Shield and yet here they are. So when last we met our heroes, um, you had uh, met back up and headed over to the crew quarters area where all of you have basically rented um, some, you've, you've rented temporary lodging while your ship was being, while your ship was being repaired. Um, and you're in the, if you want to hop over to the station map section of the character keeper, that will show um, kind of a generic layout of what this, what the station is, um, shows where the, where the corridors lead and how the various parts of the station come together. You can see pretty much all of that by just pulling up, um, just pulling up like a, like, like an info panel. Um, they're kind of all over the ship that tell you where you are and where you want to go. Just because you know where they are though, doesn't necessarily mean that you have clearance to enter that area. So uh, there have been, um, so you did see a number of station security personnel heading toward the atrium and the docks. You decided to run in the opposite direction. Um, and in, in the distance, you have definitely heard the sounds of shouts and screams and gunfire and explosions. Um, but yeah, you are, uh, but yeah, I guess we will, I will pick things up where we were last time, which was you are in the living quarters near your, um, you know, you've, you've got your equipment. I did, I think we did establish in the fiction, however, that um, on this station, you were not allowed to bring like heavy weapons. So those of you that had a loadout that included a heavy weapon, um, or that, that included a, a, like a pretty major weapon, like the kind of weapon that could like punch a hole in the side of a space station, they weren't letting civilians wander around with those. So, um, so that means uh, Banks does not have your smart rifle. Um, Eddie doesn't have a combat shotgun. Um, Riggs does not have his flare gun. However, Olga was able to have her trank, her trank pistol because that's that's the kind of weapon that isn't going to jeopardize the sh jeopardize the integrity of the um, of the space station. <clears throat> so that's where we are. You have all of your other, you have access to all of your other equipment. Um, like, so if you wanted to suit up in a vac suit or a, or a hazard suit, you certainly may. Um, otherwise you'll be in standard crew attire. And that's where we left that. And that's where we left. Um, you were trying to decide, I think you were trying to decide what your, I think, I think you were trying to decide what your plan of action is. I, Trying to remember which because I, I neglected to review the video. Um, <laughs> I neglected to review the videos to uh, which I which I intended to do. I th <laughs> think you said you were thinking about heading over to the med bay, or or am I misremembering that? We we um, you're not misremembering it in the sense that we had we had intended to go to the med bay, but then we were transported to the living quarters and then we were going to decide where we wanted to go, which I think meant that we needed to decide if we still wanted to go to the med bay. Um, so I think we should just like get in character maybe and, and sort it out outside our old pod hotel. Sounds good. Yeah. You, awesome. Yeah. You, yeah, you're. Uh, th that's that's the other thing. You're you're basically got like the Japanese pod hotels as the living quarters that you're that you have. Um, you know, you know, cheap and functional, but not not super comfortable. Cool. Just like banks. Uh, so let's see here. Um, so I think banks. Uh, one of the last things we briefly discussed was. Uh, perhaps we should find an alternate um, way to travel so that we're not traveling through the corridors occupied by Black Shield. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Should we try the security and administration to 
arm up or do we need to convince each other of what the right course of action is? As long as we're somewhere that has walls so that we're not going to get blown into space when some unintelligent person blows a hole in the atrium. I... And, you know, it is a space station. So as you're like walking through, there's definitely, I mean, you know, there's, there's definitely like, like airlock doors that you're going through and you presume that if you, you presume that the sensors are such that if an area does, um, if an area does depressurize, they're going to be able to like seal that section off so that the whole station doesn't depressurize. Hey, um, looking around, I see a lot of other people coming back oh, yeah. to the quarters, right? What do y'all think about trying to get maybe like a health tech ID or something to pass through these these gates a little more easily. Like, uh, you know, yeah. It looks like an easy mark. I see. So then we can get into the restricted section. Yeah. Away from whatever's going on. Yeah. Um, I, I know one of you was chatting with, I think one of you was chatting with a health tech employee. Tally for marketing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Banks, that was you, right? Yes, I was. Uh, I was speaking with uh, Tally. Um, I I try to locate her in the onrush of uh, people approaching the living quarters, Gordon. Okay. Um, let me. I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to say. Yeah. There's a. I was playing. Um, if this were if this were like Call of Cthulhu, I would call for a luck roll. Um, the other game that I play that uses percentile dice. Um, let me take a quick glance at. Um, I am going to suggest. Why don't. Um, to like take a, take a guess as to where this person might be. I think that would be an intellect check to try to like guess where this person might get to like try to make an educated guess as to where that where that person might be staying and to like and and head over there. Um, and you know if you think any skills might come if you think any of your skills might come into play. Um, you know, you can certainly add an add add the add, add that skill add your skill level to your stat, and then you want to roll under that. So I think that um, I think that Banks would walk up to this wall terminal uh, that's got the display of the station on it, and just begin hacking. Oh, that's good though. I like that too, machining. Um, because she has hacking and she's just uh, checking her room assignment and then displaying it on the display. Nice hacking into ha hacking in hacking into the system. I, I love it. Let's I love it. That's so uh, hacking is an expert skill. So please add 15 to your intellect. And um, so that would be let's see, you got an intellect of 36. So that are three. So that'd be a 50. So you've got a, you want to roll 51 or less. Okay. Um, and let's see. So and there's oh, a there's, there's a link there. Yeah, there's a link to the online dice roller. Um, there you go. Ooh. Oh wait. So that's. <laughs> it's yeah, calling. You're, you're, is it calling it eighty one? Uh, well, you rolled two d ten. Instead, why don't you roll d one hundred? Oh shucks. Oh, there's a d one hundred over on the right. There is. <laughs> there's a d one hundred over on the right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let me get rid of these d tens. Thanks for throwing me that. That's okay. All right, 24. Yay. Oh, and like, oh, uh, just regarding the dice roller, um, I did say earlier, um, zero, zero is, is counted a double, and that's low. That's a zero. It's going to come up on the dice roll as a 100, but that's, we're going to count that as a zero. 
Okay. If anyone's lucky enough to roll double zero. Which, you know, I mentioned Call of Cthulhu. You don't want to roll double zeros in Call of Cthulhu because that's a critical <laughs> fail, whereas it's a critical success in this game. Nice. Um, okay, so that is that is a success. Um, I'm going to say, yeah, you, uh, you, you're you able to hack into the system and you're able to pull up, uh, you're able to basically pull up her address. So you know what, you know what uh, room number she's in. She's not too, her room is not too far from here. What do you want to do? I mean, it's, she's got an actual apartment. She's not living in a, she's not living in a pod. Um, I mean, it's, so it's in a, it's in a nicer section of the living quarters area, but um, it's not too far. It's, you know, like, you know, it's, it's down this corridor, take a right and then down another corridor. Um, I think that uh, Banks will say, uh, are either of you uh, adept at sleight of hand? Never really been my thing. Rig shows his big clumsy hands. <laughs> Not my thing either. Uh, well, Eddie, Eddie, you know, you know, Eddie, like, you know, he's, you know, Eddie, like, who's like, kind of got his cat kind of tucked up in his, you know, tucked up in his um, uniform, plays like um, crew suit. Most almost envision, envisioning, I, I, I forget how he, I forget how uh, Joe described him, but I'm almost envisioning him like, like wearing a, wearing like a hoodie and the cat's like like in the hood of the hoodie. Uh -huh. But my kid used to do that with one of our cats and it was adorable. Um, Eddie kind of says, I, I, I might be able to do that sort of thing. I've been, you know, not that I'm, not that I'm well practiced, he says. I just look because I'm because I'm I mean out of character I'm looking at Eddie's skills and Eddie's got rim wise so I'm thinking yeah that's 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 definitely the stealing stuff skill. Free, what were you saying? Oh, I was just Ogle was reassuring Eddie that none of us are going to turn him into the cops for any of his uh, past experiences. So you're heading over to uh, you're he heading over to her apartment. Okay, I am going to say that um, yeah, you get there without incident. And again, there's 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 people um, you know there's people I won't say milling about. There's people looking like really nervously, like going in like going into their like going into their rooms, locking the doors. Um, and while you're while you're doing that, you definitely hear you definitely hear in the distance because you know sound travels sound travels through solids pretty well. Um, you're definitely hearing like the sounds of gunfire. It's distant, but there is a fire. There is definitely a firefight going on somewhere in the station in the direction of the atrium. Um, don't think it's rising to the occasion of calling for a fear or panic check because it's still pretty distant, but. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. You, you you realize you are in a bit of a precarious situation, but you are now at her door. How do you guys want to play this? Let's get a rock paper scissor. Eddie, you want a rock paper scissors? This I bump the door, I break it open, or you want to try slide a hand in a quiet way or the loud way? <sighs> we should probably go quiet, says Eddie. Let's All let's. Right. Let's give this a try. You know, um, he. Um, let's see. I'm just taking a look at what he's got here. I'm just taking a look at Eddie's equipment. Um, and okay, he's got he's got both the industrial equipment skill and the rimwise skill. Either I would, oh, he's got mechanical repair. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. Um, so he takes out a tool. He, he takes out a tool. You know, he, so he's like looking over his shoulders, and I'm and um, he looks over his shoulders and just doesn't seem to be under great scrutiny. Pulls out a set of tool. He pulls out a he pulls out a toolkit. Um, pops open a little panel next to the door. Starts like poking around, and I guess I am going to roll for him. 
Uh, he's using mechanical repair, which is at an expert level. And I th think I think this is going to be an intellect roll. So his intellect is 38 and 15 is a uh, 34, 5, 50, he needs a 53. So I'm, so I am going to roll for him. Okay. Um, so Eddie tinkers, so Eddie tinkers, Eddie tinkers a little bit and, um, you know, there's a, you know, he smiles, he does, does like one more little thing. He does, does one more little jab. He hits a button and there's a, there's a zap. There's a little puff of smoke. And uh, there, there's a little puff of smoke and a red light appear and, and a red light starts flashing next to the door. <laughs> to which Eddie says, oh shit. <laughs> He looks at you, Riggs, and says, "Maybe it's maybe it is time for the loud way." Yeah, let's try it my way. Out of character, is yeah. it just like a pure strength roll to like try to shoulder my way into the store? Like, I'm not sure how I'd roll that. Uh, I don't think I have a skill for it. I was going to say, if you've got it, yeah, it, it would be a it would be a straight up strength roll. Um, right. It would be a straight up strength roll unless you want to try to unless you wanted to try to try a different approach. Um, like if you're trying to like you know I don't know like grab a piece of equipment and try to like turn it into a lever and like pry it open or something like that. So I'm looking at, you do have the, you do have the jury, you do have the jury rigging skill. Do you have the jury rigging skill? Yeah. I mean, I'll look around. I don't have any equipment that would work for that, but. And you know, if you want to, because I mean, I, I mean, Eddie didn't have toolkit listed, but that would make sense for him to have. So if you've got, so if, you know, there's something kind of mundane that would make sense for you to have. You could press into service. I'm going to say cool because. All right. Cool. Yeah, I definitely have like some kind of a le lever, lever, crowbar ish thing. You know, even if it's, sure. you know, I mean, even if it's, even if it's something like, you know, a, a space Swiss army knife or something like yeah. that, I could, I could say you could probably use sure. that as a, as a tool to try to like pry things open. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put my weight into it though. Um, for sure. So that then, then it's, um, so you want to? So now you're rolling on a fifty-three. Now I'm rolling plus on a fifty-three. 10, plus yeah. ten for a trained skill. Yeah. It's, it's it snaps my tool as I try with all my weight, really. It's Joe Eddie up. It's just about to give. It's just about to give. It's just about to give and snap. I don't know. Maybe we're not getting. Maybe we're not getting in this door. Yeah, surely there's someone else around here. What? What, what if we put multiple people into this? Like, distract someone who has a badge, and somebody else can try and grab it. That's some of that science brain in action. All right, I'm going to approach someone nearby who looks like, you know, ideally if there's someone like wearing a badge on their hip, but, you know, someone who looks like they work here. Um, and I'm going to approach them um, with a sort of like, hey, sorry to bother you. No, I just, I, I've really got a migraine. I was wondering if you have any migraine medication with you. Um, huh. Um, it's, uh, I'm going to say this is a, uh... This is a this is a youngish it's a it's a youngish looking man. He's wearing I'm gonna say he's wearing like a he's wearing like um he's wearing like a like a jumpsuit that has the health tech logo that's right on it. Um it's like um you know, I, I I'll carry it with me, but like my, my ship is in the dock and I, I left it in the compartment. You know, normally I could just run back there and get it. I figured it will be fine. Oh, good, you're just going to a party. Surely you can go back to the ship and get medication. But then, you know, there's all this noise and the shouting and the explosions. And, yeah, uh, and Black, yeah, Black, yeah, Black Shield showed up to get today. Yeah, I, I think I got something. Um, yeah, 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 okay. Um, hold, hold on a sec. And he, um, yeah, he, 
you know, he goes, it's, it's like, you know, it's like a few doors down. I'm guessing he, I'm, I'm just going to say, you know, like he turned around the corner just as you realize that you're not going to get through, you're not going to get through that door you were trying to, you were trying to bust open. And with the commotion, he doesn't notice that you've, he doesn't notice that it's damaged. Um, and uh, yeah, he like leads you, he like leads you a couple, a couple of more doors down around a cor- around a corner. And, um, you know, he enters the key code into his, into his own, into his own apartment and, uh, and the, Door slide and the door slides open. He says, "Wait here, I'll be right back." And he steps inside. Watch your lifesaver. Um, and yeah, like maybe uh, I don't know, maybe like a minute or two later, he comes back and he's got a he, he's got a plastic pill bottle, and uh, you know, he opens it and like is is about to like you know shake out of and like. Presume if you were like extend your hand, he's going to. This is like. It's it's more powerful. I mean, this stuff is. I mean, you know, it, it's it's headache medicine. It's probably better than it's probably better than over the counter stuff, but it's you know this this is not something that has a really high street value. What's the plan here, folks? Uh, so yeah, Machinic, do you want to, does Riggs want to just incapacitate them physically and steal their card or? Yeah, I was thinking him? one of us accidentally bumps into him as he's pouring that out. Tries to lift and tries to lift his card. Yeah, I think we, and then we all, uh, abscond as quickly as possible. <laughs> like the Keystone cops were proving to be. It feels okay. like another Eddie maneuver. That's kind of yeah. I think you're line. yeah. I think you're true. right. I think that's going to be another Eddie thing. Eddie. And um, I think that's. I think this is going to be a. I, I think this is going to be a speed roll. Um, using rim wise, so that's going to be a fifty one. You know, I'm just going to make one. I'm going to make one observation of of mothership thus far. Um, even when you got skills, a lot of these things are only a 50-50 shot. I think that when um, when Banks sees Eddie kind of bounce off and shake his head like, "No, I didn't get it." I think um, she steps forward and she says. Riggs, incapacitate this man. I'm going to flat out swing for a hit, I think, is the is really the thing that I'm going to do. And I know that's only 43% chance, but... Well, you know what? And um, I'm going to say this guy is not... I'm just going to say this guy does not see it coming. So I'm going to give you advantage on this roll. Right. So basically roll, roll, roll twice and take the better. And yeah, that's going to be a straight up strength check. Yeah. I mean, unless you got like hand to hand combat. I got on my second roll. There we go. Uh, yeah, you uh, you you clock this. Yeah, you you incapacitate him. Give like give us a scene. What's that look like? Yeah. Well, as soon as Banks gives me uh, the word, uh, I throw my arm back and just cold cock him when he's not looking. It's not pretty. It's certainly, you know, something I'm not going to be proud of later, but it works. Uh, and I, you know, I'm shaking my hand a little bit after. Uh, the scene before that was Banks. Banks says something along the line. Banks says, Riggs, we need to incapacitate this man. He's, he, goes, he looks up and goes, what? Exactly. And, and that is when your fist hits his face. Yes. Oh, the, the pills go flying. Oh, God. The pills go flying. <laughs> Uh, tries to he, pick he, most he, of them up and okay. tuck them into yeah. the guy's pocket. Yeah. yeah. Pills go flying. Um, you know, like he like lands, he just he goes, he just goes, I mean, he goes down like a wet rag. Um, <clears throat> um but yeah, you were just you're just trying to punch him out. Uh this guy was not a combatant at all. Um he goes down. Um do you drag him like into do you like 
drag him back into his apartment. Yeah, if his door's open, let's let's pull him into the apartment. And I it's a polite thing to do. You know, it, exactly. I'm not thinking like a criminal at all while I'm looking around the apartment for anything else that might be useful. So, um, Warden, is this jumpsuit that he's got on a health tech jumpsuit? It is. And if a it health, is, it is a health tech jumpsuit. Uh, which one of us does it fit? Um, and you know, and you know, you are in this guy's apartment. He may have more than one. Um, I'm going to say just for. Um, I'm going to say that it probably is going to fit. Um, I'm saying I'm. I'm I'm going to say that you find a couple of jumpsuits. All of you could get into one. Uh, all, all of you can get, any of you could get into one of these jumpsuits. I'm just going to say for the sake of argument that Banks and, I'm going to say Banks and Olga, it would be a pretty good fit. Um, it's going to be too tight for Eddie. I mean, again, he could get into it, but you know, the sleeve, you know, the, the sleeves might come, you know, the sleeves might be here, and the um, I'm going to I'm going to say Eddie's I'm going to say both Eddie and I'm going to say both Eddie and Riggs are are significantly bigger this guy than this guy. He could probably get into it, but it would be it's it's ill it's it would be obviously ill fitting. But both Banks and Olga, um, it 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 fits it it would fit pretty well. Folks, is there any value in dressing up as health tech personnel? We might as well if we're trying to infiltrate health tech. And obviously, you and obviously you get his key card. We um, can state that Riggs and Eddie are our test subjects. Or security. Um. I while you, while you all are changing into the um, jumpsuits, jumpsuits, I would. I'm looking to see if he has any other things that are going to get us access, or if he has any personal protection, any kind of firearm or weapon or anything like that. Those are the two things I'd be looking for in his. Got room. it. Yeah, um, I don't need to roll for that. I'm looking in the wrong book. Give me just a sec. Yeah, I'm looking in the module, and I want to be looking in the rule book. Why didn't I have that open already? Give me just a moment. Okay, let's looking for the equipment list. Oh, that's an annoying thing about the rule book. It doesn't have an index. Display to page view skills. Let me just, I'm just going to take a quick glance at the, um, I'm just take a quick look, glance at the equipment list, see if any of these things come in, would, if he's got anything that would make sense that you would be able to pick up. Um, So uh, I, I am going to say that if you're going to like grab grab the grab the like scoop up the pills and throw them in, um, like you've got a bottle of pain pills. That's an actual piece of equipment. Um, you can't. You've uh, let's see. I'm going to say that he's got. I'm going to say two other things. He's got a uh, he's got a bio scanner that's like sitting on a table, and when you're like. You like open up a desk drawer. He's actually got he's got a crank gun. It's a different model than Olga's, but he's he's got one. I take the crank gun and I let people know I'm like gun, and then the bio scanner. I turn to Olga and I'm like, I'm surely you know how to work one of these. Is it a nicer model than the one I have? Um, I'm going to say it's exactly the same model as the one you have. 
can you show me how to use it <laughs> or 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 eddie um I'll, I'll let me i can read the description off of the let, let me just read the description of what this thing says so bioscanner allows the user to scan the immediate area for for signs of life uh generally can scan 100 meters in all directions without being uh without being blocked by most known metals can tell the location and signs of life, but not what the life is. So Olga explains oh, all I'm, that to me. <laughs> I'm also going to say you find two other two other somewhat useful pieces of equipment in this guy's in this guy's room. Um, he's got a he, um, he's got a first aid kit, and he's got a flashlight. Yeah, that definitely seems worthwhile. So yeah, you know, I, I was, I wasn't anticipating that in a sci-fi game we'd be like, you'd be like, you know, not gonna, you'd be like, fighting people and taking their stuff, but, but you didn't kill him. You just knocked him out, and then he started. Um, I'm gonna say he's, he, I'm gonna say he was, I'm gonna say he was, you know, he's he's out for a little bit, but uh, you're still like. You're still in his apartment when he's starting to come around. All right, guys, we should leave. I mean, I, I leave a note on the guy's desk. She says, sorry, hope you survive. I mean, you know, you could conceivably shoot him with his own trank gun, but. Uh... OK, um, so you've got uh, so you now have a health tech pass. Um, two of you are in health tech uniforms. Um, what did you do with your old, what did you do with your old clothes? Are you taking it with you? Did you leave them there? I'd like to roll it up in a, and put it in a little bag if I. I'm going to say you can, can probably find, find a bag. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say you could probably find a, find a bag of some sort that you can like stuff your clothes into. Okay. Um, yeah. So you've, you've found some more stuff. Um, you head back out into the hallway and you start and you start heading back toward health tech. Um, the sound of gunfire uh, as so like looking at the map. Um, so you're taking that you're taking that corridor that connects from living quarters back toward toward that other corridor that goes that uh, is like run under the atrium. As you're heading in that direction, you definitely hear more gunfire. Is it still coming from the atrium? Um, it's coming from that direction. Uh, you know, you're like heading down the corridor, and it's coming from the direction in which you are heading. Um, and I'm going to say you get about, um, I don't know, I'm going to say you get maybe a couple of hundred feet from that, from like the main intersection. So you're on like a, ma you're like on a major concourse here. There are other, there are other routes around, but um, you're on this main cor concourse, and as you're heading in that direction, you definitely see um, like station security personnel falling back and black shield personnel pressing forward uh such that the black shield personnel are now like farther down the atrium uh i mean are like farther down the corridor that heads like so if you look at that that if you're looking at the map the that line that goes from atrium down to security administration um the mercenaries are now past that intersection towards security and and an administration. So it looks like they are starting to secure more and more of this station. Um, the other thing is now that you get a look at them, the station security personnel, they're dressed in, you know, they're basically they're they're equipped like cops. The Black Shield personnel are in full battle dress. These are like these are like battlefield, these are like battlefield soldiers. So it looks like the security personnel are out looks like looks like the station security personnel are seriously outgunned. Um, two things that immediately come to, not, to mind: you don't know how many Black Shield personnel are actually on the ship. There might not be that many, um, and you're also you would also imagine that security personnel know the ship a lot better than the Black Shield people do, or know the station a lot better than the Black Shield people. But um, continuing down in this direction, you are probably going to end up in an area where it is controlled by Black Shield. What do you wish to do? Oh, I don't want to run into those guys. 
Me neither. Are we? Uh, I am. I am going to say there are there are there are definitely some there there are definitely some side passages. Um, you know, there's a ventil you know, there's there's a ventilation system you could conceivably try to try to go through. That would be very genre appropriate. Is the closest access to a ventilation system through part of living quarters um, to the south? It moves toward in, into the south, kind of toward the lower portion of the living quarters that goes toward engineering. Is that correct? Um, I'm going to say yes, there is one. I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing that on the map, but I think that would make a lot of sense. That yeah, there is there is a section of that you're guessing that there's a section of the ventilation system that you could take and go down that that would presumably connect to well, I mean, they're eventually all going to connect to like the, the the central like air processing cent like the the central air processing unit, which you would assume is in engineering. Should we try to backtrack through living quarters to that? Seems like a good option. See if we can go around those guys. Down and around. What was the what was our plan? Were we originally going to try to get to the ship? And, yeah, exactly. We Phoenix laughing because we don't have a plan. <laughs> uh, was yeah. it to try to get to our ship and just try to escape with whatever repairs they had done? Um if the ship's space were that seems like a decent plan like yeah out of character i know that wasn't our plan but i mean it seems like a good idea like you know what i mean like i think we had zero plan i don't think we had a plan at all just like zero i think we were like i, I think your plan think... was like people with guns over there let's go that way <laughs> yeah well i mean i think you might even a plan <laughs> giving us even more credit than we deserve because i think we were like people with guns let's go do some stuff <laughs> whereas like anyone in their right mind would be like let's regroup let's think about it let's maybe play it safe i mean i feel like even john mcclain was like let me figure some things out and lay low but we were just running around um so yeah I'm I am totally open to um, anything. The idea of like trying to get to the spaceship and seeing what condition it is in is at least like narratively kind of interesting. Because I don't think personally, Riggs did not bond enough with um, checks notes. <laughs> What's her name? Zoe. Uh, to be like, I'm gonna go save Zoe. Um, you know, I'm down for my crew. I'm rolling with you all. So, I mean, if, if that sounds good to you guys, like, but yeah, yeah, in, re in reference, in reference to Die Hard, which is a movie I truly love. Yes. Uh, when, when John McClane realized that the place was under, under attack, his first reaction was to find a place to hide and do a whole lot of recon yeah. before he did anything. Yeah. Um, so I think that like, We've kind of established, though, with the out of character, with the way the system works and so on, that we're not going to be taking down in any of these folks, right? So not without here. not without much better weapons or not without like a lot of stealth, like presumably. I mean, so I'm just so out of character, just, you know, like the genre appropriate stuff. And, you know, the viewers at home have probably seen the the cutaway to like the command crew of of the, uh, you know, there's probably been a scene with the command crew and yeah the frontline soldiers are probably are like are like de are like really decked out in like full military battle dress but the leaders are yeah they're armed yeah they're armored but they're much much more lightly armed much more lightly armored because they're not the grunts uh because you know that's the thing about the thing about uh full military battle armor is yeah, it's really impressive. Yeah, it's really protective, but it's really hard to get around in and it's not particularly comfortable. So the commanders tend not to be walking around in tin can armor. So go with the plan to try to move toward engineering and then reassess once we discover what we can there. Sure. Daryl? 
Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah, no. Tell me, man. I think that's good. I think that's good. I like setting traps too. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I think we have to figure out how to how to do that. So. Yeah. And maybe what are these guys looking for? Like, are they here, here to steal research from Health Tech? Are they here to rob that artifact that allegedly came in on some ship? We don't know why they're here. Let's find out. <laughs> so let's do a... Uh, let's fall back. <laughs> so so the idea is you're going to get into the ventilation ducts and try to, get to, try to get to engineering and see what you can find out? Awesome. Okay, let's do this as a let's do this as a little montage scene that I've uh, this this is a this is a technique I picked up in another game that I that I kind of like. Um, so I'm going to pick one of you to like set the scene of so basically so this is going to be like a montage scene of the four of you like negotiating uh, negotiating these um, these ventilation systems. I'm going to ask one of you to like describe the scene of like getting into the like getting into the, like getting into the uh, ventilation system and what it's like for all of you to be crawling through. I'm going to ask, um, I'll, I'll pick one of you to describe an obstacle. Uh, oh, and, and that first person should also, like after you've described that, describe an obstacle that you encounter. I'll pick someone else to, to tell us how you get past that obstacle. And then I'll ask a, I'll ask the, the I'll ask the third person to describe how you get from the obstacle to your destination. Sound cool? Awesome. Um, I think I'm going to pick um, Machinic. Would you like to? Would you like to set the scene? Uh, tell us what it's like to be negotiating these core, these uh, ventilation tunnels, and also what obstacle you encounter. Sure. Yeah. We. You know. We open up and we see the the security forces being pushed back as we as we've already you know as we've already seen as described, and at that point, that's when you know we all have our kind of quick huddle and turn back to go look for these vents that, of course, are a little high up there there are vents that we have to so it's you know kind of an awkward moment when people are climbing on me uh but that's really i think the thing that's happening um and then it's an even more awkward moment as y'all like i jump up and i'm the last one in and i need help being pulled in and I'm a little on the like slightly larger side, so it's it's hard to for me to get through. That's a perennial obstacle my whole way through. But we we go we go down a very long corridor, and then our chief obstacle is that we know we're we need to go down to engineering. Our chief obstacle is that the next there's a big drop in in the in the ventilation shaft so we've got to negotiate this very large drop fantastic i love it uh gray would you describe how you get past this obstacle sure um so we spent a little while like staring down this drop like what are we going to do here like this this does not look like a safe place to go. Um, until Banks, I think, gets impatient and says, "You you humans are being illogical," and just starts like scooching down, like hands braced on both sides. Like I don't understand what the problem is. I love it. All of you, are, all, all of you are following in suit. Okay. I love it. Um, and Mark, would you describe um, what it is? Could you describe like the end of the, uh, like, could you describe like the end of it, like like or, like the the negotiation past this obstacle to your destination? 
So I think that we're moving along through the vent and this one is particularly tight leading to engineering. It's so tight that Riggs almost has to be kind of pushed along through it because of his, his bulk. Um, and at one point uh, along the way, um, we can hear voices that are coming not from ahead of us, but like kind of directly outside of us. And then we hear a single shot and then um, some boots walking away. Uh, and then we, uh, after that seems to, to fade away, we continue toward the engineering um, access point. Um, and there's a little fan at the end of the vent that is preventing us from going further. But if we peer through um, that vent, we can see that there somebody is here in engineering. And I'm going to leave that up to, to you, Warden, to decide who is here and having a discussion right now. Got it. So yeah, I was cool. That's, that's awesome. So yeah, there's this big fan at the end. You really can't really, it's going to be difficult to get past that, but, uh, so this, but you, you, you know, you're in the engineering area because you can see that when you like peer through the grates, there is a, there is a technician and he's dressed again, he's dressed in like the, he's dressed in like, you know, the station, like he's dressed in like the station maintenance personnel um, like engineering personnel jumpsuits because, you know, hey, it's, I'm, I'm going for like the 70s sci-fi vibe and jumpsuits. Um, and he's like sitting, he's like sitting in a chair um, and there is, he, he's sitting in a chair, um, but there's a guy with a, there's, there is a guy with a gun um, he's got, he's got, got the gun pointed at him and he's saying, and the guy with the gun is like, I don't have all day. I need you to bypass the secure. I need you to bypass the security so we can get into lab seven. <clears throat> I know you can do this from here. You need to open up lab seven. Do that and I won't kill you. And he's, and this other guy is you know, like, he's like, okay, okay I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. He's like typing frantically at a keyboard. Um, the guy with the gun, he is not in full battle dress. Um, it is a, um, let's see, let me get a description for one of these. Um, so yeah, this guy is, um, I am going to choose randomly from the Black Shield Mercenaries table. Let me roll a D10. Three. Okay, so this guy is, um, he is not in. He's not in full battle dress. Um, he is wearing what looks to be more. Or he's, um, he's wearing like like, you know, he, he he's wearing like a military uniform. Um, you know, he's got um, it. Look, it basically, it's the light armor uniform. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's you know, it's got uh, you know, it's like got a. It's clearly got like an, like an armor plate in the front, an armor plate in the back. It's got like you know, like knee pads, elbow pads. He's wearing a helmet. Um, and he's holding a, um, and he's, he's holding a, uh, he's holding a pistol on this guy, <clears throat> but his back is to you. Um, he's, he's a young guy, um, kind of thin, um, you know, young guy, he's kind of thin. Um, and you do notice that, uh, you do notice he's got like tattoos on the back, on the back of his hands and on the back of his neck. Cause that's what you can see. Of, that's what you can see of him. <clears throat> um, you know, he's got, you know, he's got, you know, he's got a pistol held on this guy and his other hand, uh, his other hand is he's like fidgeting with his other hand. Um, he's like fidgeting with, with a lighter. 
He just kind of keeps flicking the lighter. I mean, it looks like an old, looks like it's a reproduction of like an old 20th century, like Zippo lighter. And this seems to be the, and from, from your vantage point, this seems to be the only Black Shield mercenary that's in here. These seem to be the only two guys in the room from that, that you can see. Uh, neither of them appear to know you're there. Presumably the fans made a little bit of noise. Yep. All right, Riggs is confident enough to whisper then um, in peering in and seeing seeing the scene he whispers to Olga and Banks and Eddie like should we, should we try to shoot him like we have these trank guns yeah if we can trank that guy we could take engineering assuming we can you know shoot past this fan and yeah his neck's exposed it can't be this it won't be. Eddie, can you um, can you stop this fan easily without making a lot of noise? Uh, it's the Eddie Eddie looks at the fan. Um, he says, um, stopping the fan easy. Stopping the fan without making a lot of noise. Not so easy. I mean, you know, is this fan going pretty fast? Like, it's. I mean, I assume it's you, impractical to shoot through it while it's running. Well, so the way I, the way I'm the way I am envisioning this. Um, so you're in. So you're in this like ventil you're in this like ventilation shaft, and I'm thinking it. I think it's probably above, like like running a, running along the roof. So you're like looking down. Um, you're looking at down at down at them, you know, and it's got, you know, it's got like, you know, it's got, the, it's got the, you know, again, going for 70s sci-fi, you know, it's got like the, it's got like the big grates for the, for the air to flow through. Um, so you're like above looking down, the fan is off to your left. Um, maybe from here, it's maybe only like 20 or 30 feet down. So you could certainly stop the fan if you wanted to, but it is making a pretty nice humming noise. And there's like the whoosh of air coming by. Because you're pretty close to the, uh, you're, you know, you're pretty close to the air reclamation center. So this is like one of the main fans here, and um, you know, you, there's there's a pretty good pretty good amount of, of air flowing through at this point. Um, but yeah, you're kind of like above, and um, you're you're not directly above them, but you're, you're you're like above and like like along the wall, along the up, like you're above and kind of like a, along the opposite wall from where this scene is playing out below you. And again, they don't seem to know you're there. You could conceivably, um, you know, if you want to, you could like stick the muzzle of your gun through the grate and, fi and fire through the grate. Um, alternatively, you could conceivably pop the grate, jump down supr and surprise them. Uh, yeah, if it's just a grate, I, look, I think trying to shoot through it seems easiest. Who hears the best shot? I think you should do it, Olga. Just because you're practiced with this. I am even since you are since you don't since this guy doesn't know you're there, I'm I will give I will say that at least for the first round of combat, <clears throat> for the first shots you guys fire, um, you will have advantage. Um, and it's just going to be a straight up combat role unless you've got a skill that would come into play. Although the skill that would come into play is here would be firearms. And I don't think anyone has that skill. No, no, I think the best I can do is really a stretch, which is using biology to figure out where to shoot this guy. But I think that may be too much of a stretch. That seems great to me, but I just work here. Um, if you were. If this, you know, if if you were like looking for the, if you were like administering this via a syringe, I would absolutely say yes. But you're shooting him from like 25 feet away through a yeah. grate that you're kneeling on, <laughs> and um, so yeah, I think this is definitely going to be a firearms roll. All right. So. 
but you do have advantage. So it looks cool. like cool. So I'm going to roll twice and try and get yep. under 33. Yep. Exactly. You want to roll twice, try to get under 33. So a um, okay, so a dart, so like a dart. Um, so that wasn't a critical. That was fail. That was not a critical fail. Um, so I'm going to say uh, there's the there's the. I'm, I'm I'm guessing this. I'm guessing this thing like like uses like a little like magnetic accelerator to like fire these darts because you know that just seems cool. So it's a little it's a little mini railgun that's fire that's firing this. So it doesn't make a it doesn't make a bang or even a pop. It doesn't really make a bang or a pop um, because it's it's because it's firing it's it's firing subsonic. I mean, there's a little sound, but it's 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 pretty quiet. Um, but there is the sound of this dart um, this dart hitting the video screen in front of the uh, you know. This dart like hits the video screen in front of the, the technician who's like frantically frantically typing, and um, you know, and he start and he startles and the guy with the gun like like what the hell was what the hell was that? Um, he starts um, and he definitely is starting to he's definitely start to look around. Um, Riggs, I know you also have a trank gun because you picked one up. Do you want to try to take a shot? Yes. I, now I shoot him in the face. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking he's. St I'm thinking since it's. A st yeah, I'm. I'm basically. I'm treating this as a surprise round so that uh, he still doesn't know where the, where this. He still doesn't know where this is coming from. So go ahead and uh, take advantage on this roll as well. It's going to be a straight combat roll. Nice. That is a hit. Let me see what this drink gun actually does. Give me just a sec. Uh, general equipment, weapons, here we are, drink gun, drink pistol, range nearby. Okay, it does one point of damage uh, and the target must make a body save or drop unconscious. Where are this guy's stats? Not in the module. Okay, so I'm going to the adversaries section. Uh, okay, and he has to make body save. So I am going to roll percentage, and you want me to roll high. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you uh, you hit him, you trank him, he goes down. What does that look like? He turns around. I'm not really aiming for the face, but I'm aiming for that neck, and it, it just gets him right, you know, kind of right in the front of the neck. And I think he's surprised. And so there's a look of surprise on his face, and he it takes a minute for him to go down. I don't think these tranks are like super immediate, but it's he slows down, so it's more of a slump to the floor. Uh, and the, you know, tech guy is obviously startled as well. He gets up from his seat and looks in our direction. Is that when you guys, okay, awesome. Uh, I'm going to just say that um, you hit him. Um, he doesn't, I'm going to say he doesn't reflexively like spray the area with bullets just because, um, yeah, just because I don't, I, I don't think it's. I don't think this is the right time for that. And you rolled really well. And, and you rolled pretty well there. I'm sorry. You rolled really well there. Um, so yeah, um, he goes down. 
Um, he, he slumps to the floor. Uh, the technician like stands up and is like, really, I mean, he's got like this like deer in the headlights look. Um, what do the, what do the rest of you do? I'm going to say there's like probably, a, there's probably a couple of different greats here. So if you wanted to like kick them out, you could probably all, you could all like basically just jump down at once if, if that's what you want to do. I'm going to first just call the technician like, don't worry, we're here to help. It's like, oh my god! Uh, oh, oh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say like another, another thing. This, so this, this tech, um, so like, like this, this is engineering. It's Christmas time, so thing, things were, things were decorated. And I'm just gonna say, for the sake of, in, for the sake of incongruity, this tech was wearing his uniform. And he was wearing like an old fat. He was like wearing an old fashioned Santa hat. Um. And um, you know, you jump down, and again, he's got you know, he's got his hands up, and he's like got this look of utter, utter fear. And then, and when he realizes that you know, two of you are wearing health tech uniforms, and the other two just are dressed like regular spacers, he's like, "Who, who are you guys?" And thank, did did you do that? He points at the, points at the mercenary. You know, uh, a, a sign and a ridiculous thumbs up at the same time. So there is an unconscious mercenary here. You so you are in, you know, you are in like a '70s sci-fi like engineering control room. Um, I'm imagining there's like a big, you know, there's it's like it's like a big control panel. There's a couple of, um, you know, like every few. You know, every like 15 or 20 feet, there's like an embedded keyboard that's like part of the console. Um, there's a bunch of video monitor screens that are all over the place. Uh, some of them are showing live, some of them are showing video, some of them just have like various displays. There's a bunch of blinking lights. Um, you know, there's a you know, there's a bunch of like levers and switches and dials. Um, and out of this room, there is a um, yeah, there's like there's like a there's like a door to the left and a door to the right. I'm think I'm 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 envisioning this is kind of like a kind of a long kind of a, like a long. It's a long, not particularly narrow, but this room is much longer than it is than it is narrow. Um, you know, there's no windows in there's no windows in engineering, so you can't you can't see the outside. But um, you know, there's you know there there but there are there are a number of video monitors, and looking at the monitors that are that seem to be showing like actual video. Um, you do see that there are in, in one in one of the screens you do see um, a fully a, a fully armored um, black shield soldier that is holding like you know that, that's holding a smart rifle on like four or five like station security personnel all of whom have their all of all of whom have their hands on their heads and have been disarmed. <clears throat> um, But yeah, um, and the text says, I, I, yeah, he, he wanted me to, um, yeah, so I, th I, I think I'm going to get out of here now. Um, you got to hold on. You got to hold on, man. Um, let's tie this baddie up. Maybe let, what, and I, I point to the feed where like the security people are being held at gunpoint. And I ask him, ask him, where is, where is this? Oh, that's the, um, oh, that, that's a feed from actually outside the security office. Looks like they've, looks like they must've taken, looks like they must've, uh, I mean, they're not inside yet, but it looks like they're heading in that direction. And has anybody, ha have you, is there any more of them here that other than this guy? No, he was the only one. He was the only guy that came in. I was starting to shut down once uh, once that once their leader came came on board. I was trying to like lock everything down and make sure that uh, you know going to try to make sure that they aren't able to take over the whole station. But then this guy came in and he was telling me that he needed needed me to override the locks on Medbay Seven. Yeah, let's not um, do that. What's in Medbay Seven? Uh, I I don't know. That's a health tech facility. 
it's part of the, it's, it's in their, that, that's health tech. It's, it's in their research lab. And I actually don't have control of, we don't have full control of that. I mean, they rent, yeah, they rent space from us and we've got some basic controls, but I can't, I can't open that up here remotely, not without, I mean, not without the station command, not, I mean, not without, um, Yeah, not without, um, not without. It, I, I, I can't override that. Uh, I need Administrator McLean's authorization to do that. Um, obviously, tenants wouldn't like it if we overrode their security without a good reason. So I was trying to hack in because you know he had that gun pointed at me, and he looks down and he's like that is, you know, and uh, yeah, he does have a. Uh, um, so yeah, this guy's going to be out for at least a few minutes. Um, that tranquilizer does wear off, and then you're you're groggy for quite a while. But he might still be dangerous if he wakes up. So his firearm is on the ground or in his hand? His firearm is on the ground. It is a. Uh, let's see. What does he have? Weapon he had is in uh, is an Arma twenty nine submachine gun. So Banks will pick it up and hand it to Riggs, and says, uh, "Yeah, exactly." And says, uh, "Small explosives contained inside." And uh, yeah, let's tie up this guy with uh, like machine you says. And you're like looking over looking over what this guy has. Um, yeah. So he's got he's got a submachine gun. Yep. Um, he also. He also has a. Uh, he also has a. He also has a. He also has a standard pistol. Uh, that's like in a holster on his on his side. Um, he's got. Um, where's the armor? Sorry, scrolling around on the uh, page here. It's. Armor. Here we are. Um, so he's got um, he's got light he's got uh, light armor, which is um, which has five. He's he's got light armor, which is which is five armor points. Does, does um, it fit rigs or Eddie? Uh, I was going to say this, this is, I mean, this, this is armor that is pretty much designed to, this isn't really, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like a bulletproof vest. Anyone can, basically anyone can bear, anyone can wear it. So that's light armor, five armor points. You've got one suit. Uh, you got his machine gun, you got his pistol. Um, and that's when you hear a. Uh, that, that's when you hear his calm. Uh, his calm comes alive, and uh, a voice on the other, and a woman's voice on the other said, on the other side says, uh, "Claymore, Claymore, this is Gruber. Do you have the Do you have the code yet?" Claymore, this is Gruber. Are you there? Over. I look at Eddie and can you fast talk this, Eddie? You seem pretty grim wise. Uh, I can give it a try, he says. Um, so yeah, he picks up, you know, so he picks, so he picks up the comm. Um, you know, presses presses the call button. I'm just I'm just imagining they're like walkie talkies because hey, I die because hey, die hard. Um, and he says, um, you know, he kind of like he kind of like puts his hand over the kind of like puts his hand over the receiver to like to like muffle the sound a little bit, and says, um, "Sorry, Captain, it's." Got a bad connection. Uh, must be radiation. We're st I'm still working on it. We're st 
Still working on it. Give it, give me another 10 minutes. Now let's see how that, let's see how that works. Um, looking at Eddie's skills here. I'm gonna say he's using his rim was, and I'm gonna say that's an intellect check. So he needs to roll 48 on this. <clears throat> the voice on the other, the voice on the other, uh, on the other side says, um, you know, you know, Claymore, I knew you weren't the right man for the job. I am sending someone else. I'm sending someone else down there. Um, I'm sending someone else there to take charge of the situation. <clears throat> uh, El, you know, you know. I'm sending El I'm sending Elbridge down. Yeah. Gruber out. All right, we need to get out of here. So uh, what are you doing? Uh, you don't know how much you don't know how much time you have no idea where Elbridge is um, or how much time you got. Are you going to try to are you, are you going to try to take this guy's armor? Oh, I'm I'm also going to say one other thing that he had on him was a pair of handcuffs. So you can tie him up with his own. You can like tie him up with his own handcuffs because that seems to be the kind of things mercenaries would be carrying around. Yeah, I think uh, Riggs and Eddie have the worst armor, so Riggs, you should just take it, unless it messes with your style. No, out of character, that's so kind. But I mean, I would just want to protect our Eddie because he's the player's not here. So I'm like, we should put the armor on him. Um, you know, so I, yeah, and sure, it's nice in Riggs' style. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll flavor it that way. But yeah, I just kind of want Eddie to be safe. Um, you know, so yeah, let's put it on Eddie. Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe Riggs holds it up and actually like kind of holds it to his body and sort of just passes it to Eddie, like no word spoken kind of a thing, you know, just one of those like size it up and move it to the next person. And, you know, um, when Banks hands the submachine gun, that's like the same action that, that Riggs hands the trank pistol that he had back to Banks. Like, it's just kind of, we're, we're just going through sorting through this stuff as quickly as we can. I'm going to say you can get that off. I'm going to say you get that off pretty quickly. Um, and uh, so yeah, you've, you've, you've got, you now have a, you now have a calm, that, you now have a calm for the, um, uh, you have, you have a black shield calm, you've got the armor, uh, you do, you have a pistol and a submachine gun that you can distribute as needed. Um, so if someone should figure out, you should figure out uh, who's got that. I'm also looking at the time. It's about half an hour. It's about 30 minutes past the hour. This might be a good time to take our break. And then we'll come back and we'll finish the scene and, and decide where to go from here. Uh, so let's take, let's take, um, yeah, let's take 10 minutes. Let's come back at, uh, let's come back at 40 past. And we're back. Okay, so um, so you're in you're you're in you're in main engineering. Um, oh, I forgot to say, what was the guy's name that you've been? <clears throat> yeah. So the yeah. So the, the so the. Yeah. So yeah, this this you know the, this tech here. Um, it's like we've got. I I, I think we got to get out of here. They they got more people coming. So you don't have control over the the lab blocks. You said what, what do you control from here? Like can, well, can you can you close the? You said you could close the vacuum doors. I mean, I could. I mean, there's. I mean, there's there's plenty of stuff we could do from here in engineering. Um, 
yeah, I mean, well, uh, <clears throat> I mean, we could put the whole, I mean, I, I, I could put the whole station on lockdown, but that's going to like seal people in, that's going to seal people in places. And um, honestly, I'm going to need command, I'm going to need like Administrator McLean's um, authorization in order for me to do that. She's the one who really controls all that. And if she's in her office, I'm surprised she hasn't done that already. Um, uh, it's at that where another voice comes over like this, the station's PA system, as if on cue. Um, uh, the voice says, attention all station personnel. This is, administ this is Administrator McLean. Um, all person, uh, all personnel, uh, all personnel. The the station is in the station is under attack. I do not do not trust Black Shield. Repeat, do not trust Black Shield's promises. Uh, they are going to take what they want and then will likely destroy the station. Uh, we must resist. We must we must resist at all. Uh, we must do everything we can to resist the station that, and then the voice cuts off. And there's, you know, brief silence. Um, another voice, uh, there, there's like, you know, there, there's another like, there, there's a, a, there's some more static and then a different female voice comes on and says, please, 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 everyone remain calm. This is, uh, this is Captain Gruber. Um, you have my word, as long as you, uh, as long as you cooperate, nobody will be hurt. It is not in our financial interests to do any, any long-term damage to this station. Please be calm, please comply, and everything will be just fine. <clears throat> and then, and then that goes, and then the, uh, and then the comms go silent again. And uh, the tech and the, uh, and, and the tech who's wearing the Santa hat just kind of shakes his head and says, I do not trust Black Shield, especially after the incident at, oh, what's the name of the incident? <clears throat> yeah. Especially after the incident on Deneb Seven, you can't trust you can't trust anything they said. I mean, how many people died? How many people died when they put down that strike? Does that ring any bells? Oh yeah, you've all heard of you've all heard of Deneb Seven. Deneb Seven. It was a it was a mining. Um. Yeah, it was a mining colony on a barely habitable planet. Um, miners went on strike, and miners went on strike, uh, refused to work. The their corporate overlords refused to do business. They sent down what they said was going to be a negotiating party, and when the shuttle doors opened, it was Black Shield who just kind of started massacring the miners. I had a cousin die on that, and that's when I slapped my patch on my on my jumpsuit. It says "Eat the Rich." You know, and, you know like technically, oh, so for many years, Black Shield was uh, Black Shield was. I mean, Black Shield attempted to rebrand themselves as Alliance Security. Um, you know, they fired the CEO, they fired the commanders because, you know, like there's like a big show, like people's wrists were slapped. Um, some low level, some low level personnel were, were like charged with crimes. It was, it was like a big scandal. It was all over the news. Uh, they attempted to rebrand as, ally, as Alliance Securities. Um, that didn't. And then... Um, Basically, they then declared themselves an, in, an independent organization and reclaimed the name Black Shield. Yeah, they're not generally well liked.
but yeah, you know, maybe maybe trusting these people is might not be the smartest thing to do. Really, the best way out of uh, honestly, the best like again, fairly commonly known that the best way to get Black Shield off of you, like the best way to get Black Shield off of off of you is to um, offer them offer them more money than the contract that they that they had taken, but. At, it's at least, uh, but you know, hiring, hiring Black Shield to do this. I mean, we're talking at we're talking at least ten mega credits, and I mean, you could buy one hell of a ship for ten mega credits. So, Santo, what 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 should we call you? Huh? Oh, the. You know, he looks he looks confused for a moment. He's like, "Oh, oh, uh, yeah, my name's Zeb." Zeb. Zeb O'Mort. Uh, thank you for saving me. Uh, but we got to get out of here before like more of them more of them show up. Riggs reaches his hand to shake Zeb's. Does Zeb take it? Yes, he does. All right, he takes his hand and when he, and 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 he and he shakes it nicely, but he says, "I don't think we should leave just yet, Zeb. Right now, we can see things that are coming towards us." Maybe let's give it a couple of moments. And I look over to Banks for that cold, logical mind that's gonna, gonna <laughs> that's good that's gonna guide me from here. And I look over to Olga, at that scientific mind that's gonna guide me from here. But all Riggs knows is that he's not ready to leave. And he's looking to his his comrades for for the next step. <clears throat> and I'm going to say Eddie, uh, at this point, you know, Eddie finally, Ed, Eddie straps, on, Eddie straps on the armor, you know, as, as cat, like, as like, like we weaves through, uh, weaves through Eddie's legs and he like scoops her up again. And um, I think he puts his hoodie back on over the armor and like puts cat back in. Um, and at that, Zeb says, well, if we're going to stay, uh, we might want to at least, and he sits back down at the comm and like starts typing again. We at least might want to know when they're coming. And he you know, types a few things and a couple of the video and, a, and two of the video feeds change. And he points at one and says, that's looking, you know, that's looking down, that's looking down the cord, down the corridor that they're probably going to have to come in and this one is just kind of like looking down and like, and this one is just exactly what's what's on the other side of that door. They won't be coming that way, he gestures, because that's where the, because, uh, you know, that way pretty much, that, that way pretty much just goes to environmental control. Um, and I'm going to say that, um, this is so. Yeah, at this point, um, two black shield soldiers, uh, two black shield soldiers, are starting to are starting to come down the corridor. One is in full battle dress. One is dressed similarly to the guy who's starting to come around, but is uh, I'm kind of, he's probably like, like handcuffed him to like handcuffed him with his hands behind his back, like to a pipe or something that he isn't going to get out and. I'm, I'm also imagining that you've like stuffed the bandana and like stuffed someone's bandana and is oh you maybe you gagged maybe you gagged him with the Santa hat. <laughs> oh, sorry, God, I'm not muted. Good lord, sorry. <laughs> that was perfect. That was awesome. Okay. Um, cause that, okay. That just, came, that just came. That just came to me. <laughs> okay. Olga says, looking at this, I, I don't think we want to fight those guys. What are we gonna do? Can we? I don't know. Close the door on them. Can we like uh, suck the oxygen out of that hallway? What are our options here? Um, well, 
so Zeb says, well, I can't, I mean, I can't do the, I can't do that kind of, I can't, I can't do that level of control, but I can like, I mean, I mean, I've already locked, I already locked the door. All right, that's a start. Can you turn the lights out in that hallway? Oh yeah, that I can do. Um, like right now? So uh, Banks pulls out her infrared goggles and who's got the submachine gun? Okay, Riggs. Hand those over to Riggs. Um, I mean, it's a little bit of an advantage, but is there anything else in the environment that we can anybody wants to point out? Pipe loud Christmas music into the hallway. I don't know if that would help. It can't hurt. <laughs> That'd be awesome too. Oh my god. I mean, there's a few. Uh, I mean, in in engineering, uh, Zeb points out. Well, we got. I mean. We don't have weapons per se, but um, I mean, we got a we got this fire. We got a I mean, we got a we got a fire extinguisher. Uh, I got a hand welder. I got a nail gun. Those are all good things for us to take with us, but I think what we should do is time the lights going down and the door opening and me firing on them in the dark with Winter Wonderland playing. <clears throat> I love it. Uh, what so, like, so are the rest of you kind of like taking, are, are the rest of you taking like defensive positions or like hiding behind heavy objects? I mean, you know, this is a control room. There's like, I'm imagining there's like you know like like big like consoles that uh, I imagine there's like big metal consoles that you could conceivably hide behind. Um, and Riggs, what 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 are you planning to do? Like so, when the lights go out, you're going to be like out there. You're going to you're going. Are you taking cover behind something? Uh, lights lights go out. Riggs will be kneeling. And he'll be leaning so that he basically is like trying to take a quick kind of a pot shot sort of a, an approach. So he's trying to go for like a two thirds cover sort of in, uh, you know, when the as soon as the door opens. So whichever way the door opens first, you know, he's going to be on the side to to shoot out even as the door is opening effectively. Okay. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so I think at this point you see on the screens, uh, they have approached the door. They, you know, like, they like hit the code that's supposed to open it. It doesn't open. They hit it again. The door still doesn't open. Um, so the one who's not in the battle armor, uh, like points, like points at the panel, takes a step back and the other one takes a couple of step steps back and like points his um, um, no. uh, what is that? Yeah, points his uh, smart rifle at the let me yeah points his you know like points a bit points a big gun at the panel and um, and like opens fire on it. Um, and uh, after after shooting it after shooting it a couple of times, they're able to like, you know, the first guy goes in and basically wrenches like wrenches the door open, and I think I think the cue uh, was like once they start to wrench the door open, is that when you cut the lights and start up, what Frank Sinatra? This is the door to the hallway that leads to our door. Or this is no, our this, door? no, this is no, this is your door. Okay, well, I, I I don't know why I'm not screaming, "Hurry up, Zeb!" The minute that they're touching the panel. <laughs> okay. <why> I, <laughs> Zeb. Got it. Okay, so, yeah. 
So yeah, I, I, I figured you wanted to wait until they like got into the room and that's when, I, I thought you said that like when they got into the room, that's when you were going to open, that, that's when you're going to like cut the lights and open fire on them. Yeah, no, I was shooting out the door into the hallway, but it's all good. Oh, okay. We, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I, misunder- I misunderstood. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. It's all good. Like a whip in a barrel. Yeah. So we can, we, it works either way. I mean, effectively. Okay. So yeah, so they start, so just as they're starting to open the door, the lights go out, um, music comes up. Um, it's like completely dark because he was able to cut, you know, he's able to cut nearly all the lights. I mean, there's still, there's a little ambient light in here from like, like, you know, the, like the control panels and like blinking lights, but it's, uh, it's, it's really dark. Um, and I'm going to say that, yeah, you got, you kind of got the drop, you kind of got the drop on them. Um, and Riggs, you are, you are wearing those, uh, infrared goggles. So you are not hampered by, uh, you are not hampered by this. So between, um, so I'm going to say for this round, at least, um, you have advantage on your, everyone has advantage on attack. Anyone who wants to attack these guys, you have advantage on your attacks. Um, I should say, I, well, those, it's dark, and you've only got one set of IR goggles. So, Riggs, you have advantage on your attacks. The rest of you, uh, the rest of you have disadvantage on your attacks because you can't see. If you want to attack, if you want to just like stay put and hide, that is absolutely fine too. Or if you want to do something else, let me know. Um, so, Riggs, you are attacking. Banks, what are you doing? Um, Banks is. Uh... Let's see. So the, the guy that we have is effectively incapacitated still. Um, Banks will draw the trank pistol um, okay. and walk over to. So Riggs is at the opening to the door, and Banks will be to the left of that, so he can su- she can support Riggs in whatever way is is necessary. Are you like just are you like just inside the door as it opens or are you back a ways? Well, um a little bit more inside than Riggs, and Riggs is taking like a two-thirds cover kind of shot is the way that we had envisioned it, I think. Okay. Cool. Olga, what are you doing? I am hiding under the console. Okay. What would Eddie be doing? I think Eddie would also I think Eddie would also be hiding under a different console. I think we established in the first. I think we established in the previous session that Eddie was Eddie is not, shall we say, a risk taker. Um. Okay. Um. I think it would make sense for. Uh, so yeah, this this goes off. So I'm going to say, uh, Riggs, you can. You have the IR goggles. You see them come in. They can't see you. At least you don't think they can see you. Um, so, what do you do? I roll a five. I'm assuming that hits. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. That absolute. That absolutely hits. Uh, so that was your SMG. Uh, that's going to be. That's going to do two D10 damage. And are you shooting at the one in? Are you shooting at the one in the heavy armor or the light armor? Yeah, I'm shooting at full metal dude. Full metal dude. Okay. Roll some damage. That's two d ten. Nine points of damage. What is the ar- what is that armor rating? Okay, he's got standard battle dress. Okay. Um Yeah, you shoot him up. You you shoot him up pretty badly. Um Um he goes fly he goes flying, you know, like 
you hit, and just the the force of the impact um like 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 knocks him back um you can tell that his armor did absorb uh you, you like you mostly hit his armor and his armor mostly absorbed it but um you did more damage than his armor than his armor rating which means uh, you've shot up his armor so, to the point where it's not going to offer, it doesn't offer any protection at this point. Um, you know, he's knocked back, he's bleeding. Um, and uh, and every, everyone else, everyone else is basically hiding. Oh, I'm sorry, Banks, you, you weren't hiding. Uh, what are, so it is, it is pretty dark in here. Um, if you don't have IR, you cut the lights. So if you don't have IR goggles, I'm going to say you can go ahead and fire, but you're going to be shooting it. You're going to be shooting at disadvantage. Yeah. Um, so Banks is going to peek around and try to shoot at where they think the, uh, less armored person is, okay. uh, rolling at disadvantage and it's going to be, I don't think I've shot anything. So is it combat? Yep, plus, you're gonna just roll. You're gonna. It's gonna be combat, combat plus. It's gonna be combat, and you can add if you have a combat. If you have a, a firearm skill, you can add the firearm skill rating. Got nothing there. Okay, so 35 is what I'm shooting for. That's gonna be. And this is gonna be disadvantage here, though. So you're gonna to have yeah. to roll twice and take the worst. Right. Oh, there it is. There's the worst. Okay. Well, no one's They're rolled a double yet, so. No one's rolled a double, so no no crits no crits here. Um, uh, yeah, you yeah you. Uh, this I'm gonna say this I'm gonna say this shot misses. And go ahead and tell me uh, go go ahead and tell me what that like. So 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 what 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 did the viewers at home see on that on that missed shot? So Banks is um, Banks actually crosses the 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 width of the door walking and firing multiple shots into the hallway and then the hopes of having one of them hit because she's essentially firing blindly and then she finds herself on the other side of the door and she reloads the trank gun okay that's just for a fact i mean i don't want to really fire multiple shots just no 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 that's that's that, that's cool okay. i mean you know it's an action movie no one actually counts bullets exactly. unless, it, unless it actually counts <laughs> unless it's a plot point <laughs> Um, awesome. And Olga and Olga and Eddie and Zeb are all hiding. Um, I think it's going to be their reaction. Um, so I think the, I, th I think the first, I think the guy who's less armored is just going to I think he's just going to like fire blindly in the direction of where he saw the muzzle flash um, of the of the machine gun. So I guess that means he's going to be shooting at Riggs. Um, so Riggs, you are you're you're like kind of half you're you're hiding behind a console. Did you say? Or is, you're you're taking cover partial cover behind the console? Partial cover just behind the way that the door is. So oh, okay. you know at this point. You know, I'm 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 feeling like I'm in danger. So got it. Take okay. Uh, let's see. Where was cover? For what it's worth, I keep imagining this as they're still kind of in the hallway. They haven't crossed the threshold to the correct room where we are. They're okay. they're not in the room yet. Um, they opened the door. That's when the lights came out. That's when Frank Sinatra came over, like loud, loud Christmas music came over the PA system. And someone in the dark started shoot, started like, like showering them with bullets. Um, one got hit, got knocked back. The other didn't, um, although I think he could tell that someone else was shooting tranks at him. Um, and that's when he like whipped his gun around and is, he's just like opening fire. Um, he's also got an SMG, so he's basically he's returning fire here. Uh, I'm gonna say he's. Um, I know I've got something on cover in here somewhere, and I'm not seeing it. Oh, here it is. I'm gonna say you've got light cover. So 
So he is going to shoot at you. Um, and where was the mercenary combat? Of, yeah. Okay. Um, so, oh, and I'm, yeah, well, he was firing at disadvantage, but that first shot missed anyway. So I'm not going to bother rolling the second. Well, you know, I should roll a second time in case he gets, uh, in case he gets, a, in case he gets a critical failure. And he does not. Okay. Um, so yeah, the other, the other guy who's, who's like less lightly, who's more lightly armored, um, he fires in the direction that the, that Riggs, he fires where Riggs had been, but uh, Riggs, Riggs fired and moved. So where you had been sit, where you had uh, initially shot is now like full of, uh, you know, is now full of bullet holes, but you weren't there, so you're fine. Um, I guess it is your turn now. Um, Olga, are you still hiding or is there something else you want to do? I don't think there's anything particularly I can do right now. Okay. Uh, Banks, what are you doing? Banks is preparing to follow the same procedure um, following uh, after Riggs blasts away down the hallway. Okay. And Riggs? Yeah, I'm going to... Um, I see the guy fall when I had the glasses on. And yep. I see the muzzle flashes, you know, and I wince, but I recover. And I go I actually move into the hall to get a better shot on the um, pronish guy. Oh, the guy you're you're gonna, you're gonna guy. shoot the guy who's down. Yeah. Okay. I'm still. I'm still thinking about him. Okay. Yeah. Makes total mm, sense. Perhaps. Um, well. Yeah, um, I'm going to say, go ahead. You have uh, <laughs> Avenge your cousin. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to say definitely take definitely take advantage again. Um, he's on the ground. He's 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 trying to get up, uh, but he's hurt. Um, his armor has been pretty badly shot up last time. So it's in the dark. You and you have IR goggles. So go ahead and uh, make another combat roll with advantage. Close, but not close enough. Wait, 37 and what? 47? 37 versus 47. If you would Gordon, like to, I would like to take a stress. Like to, yeah, if you want to spend a stress, um, <laughs> if you want to spend a stress, uh, you can turn that into a partial success. And I'm going to say the partial is um, you have to take, uh, I'm going to say the partial here is you're going to have to take, uh, you're going to have to take multiple shots. Um, so scratch off. Uh, so for this, so yeah, you go go ahead and roll damage, but this is going to take this is going to take three rounds. Okay. So that's two d ten. Ooh, twelve points. Um, Okay. Um, uh, yeah, he, he is, he, this mercenary is not going to be getting up again. What does that look like? Well, I think the camera is switches from infrared view, like as I'm taking the shots, actually to dark and showing the muzzles flash 
and then you know maybe there's it it's more audible like an audible hit and that's that's how sort of how that scene plays out love it that's awesome okay uh and banks uh you're you were also going you were also going to try to like shoot the other guy Yep, crossing the crossing the width of the door. Actually, um, when if Banks can sense that Riggs has moved in there, then Banks yep. will follow Riggs in there. Okay. Um, I'm but again, sure. firing at disadvantage here. Yep. Oh. I mean, you're getting. I was going to say oh. you get. I mean, you're getting you're getting glimpses here and there from because mainly the mainly the light you're able to see is the uh, is the muzzle flash. Ooh. So it's a miss. Close, Bummer. but not. Yeah, not this is this this is yeah. I mean, if if you didn't have disadvantage, that would have worked. But you are you are shooting. You are literally shooting. You're you're did you are literally taking shots in the dark. Um, disadvantage does not work in your favor. <laughs> Yep, that's kind of the point. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think what you, so I think what's going to happen. So what happens next is, uh, again, you've got one, you got one guy, uh, you got one guy there um, who is, who like, um, I think he's just, I think he starts shooting at Riggs again, because again, in the direction of the muzzle flash. Um, but again, he's got disadvantage because he still can't see you. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and roll. Yeah, that was that first that first roll is a miss. So I'm not going to bother rolling the second time. Um, so yeah, um, you know, like, you know, more you know, like, you know, more bullets. Um, again, he shot where Riggs was, but Riggs wasn't where he was because he was smart enough to move. Um, and that's when you hear the guys. That's when you hear the guy apparently like like shout aloud, presumably into his calm. Um, this no no we're taking heavy fire and engineering to heavy fire and engineering <clears throat> uh, you know elbridge is down and then he uh and and that's when um you know what? I think he says that. I, I don't think. I, I don't think the. Uh, he, I'm not going to retcon. I'm not going to retcon that. I, th I think he's. I think he's. A, I think he's going to be able to do that. Uh, he, he's able to fire, say that, and say that on his comms. Um, and I think that's when. Um, I think that's when he. I think that's when this guy remembers. Like, oh wait a minute. I've. Oh wait a minute. I've got a flashlight. And so a flashlight comes on is like kind of like swinging around the room because this guy was doing, yeah, he was doing, he was doing a couple of things. Um, but basically there's basically there's enough light to see by in the room now. Um, I think there's a quick cut to Zeb who is, um, oh, you know what I think, I think, Oh yeah, I think I think when I think during the firefight, I think I think we see um, Zeb uh, like open up the door that was into the environmental control room, and he goes through that and closes the door behind him. Um, and I think we see Eddie um, like like sitting on. I think I think I'm imagining Eddie is like sitting like in the wheel in like the in like the knee well underneath one underneath like one of the consoles, like curled up way in the back. He's got cat, you know, like, like with his, with his knees, like practically under his, under his, under his chin. 
he's just like holding this cat. He's like holding cat and his, you know, petting cat and says, it's okay, cat. It's going to be okay, cat. We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Um, Olga, what are you doing? Um, well, I think I have my bio scanner out. You know, since we turned off the console that showed us where everyone was, I have a bio scanner out trying to figure out if there are actually more um, black shield people close by. Um, at the moment, okay, cool. Um, at the moment, no. You can tell there's um, you can tell there's uh, two people in the there, there's two people on the other like in the environmental control. Or the, I'm sorry, there's two life signs in the environmental control area. There's like the people that you know. There's like your your crew is in either this control room. Uh, there's there are two life signs. I'm sorry. There's three life signs in the adjoining corridor, and you're not picking up anything else. So the only thing that you are the only life sign that you were not expected to see was back in the environmental control area, which is where Zeb, which is where Zeb went into. Um, and that's, uh, and I think, I think you hear, I think you hear crackle over both over the, like the bad guy comm that you have. And also you hear it coming over, um, the other like bad guy who's still up. Um, uh, the voice of, uh, Captain Gruber says, says, uh, Fall back, fall, fall back, fall back. Rendez, rendezvous at Health Tech. Uh, we are about to receive the package. Um, what do you do? Um, so in the hallway, it, this is maybe a little too action hero -y, but Banks wants to uh, drop to the floor next to the dead Black Shield person um, grabbing their smart rifle, like, or maybe not even grabbing it out of their hands, but just kind of like positioning it so that it's pointed at um, uh, the commander <laughs> here and says, uh, drop it, because they've got the their gun. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's what you're going to do. Uh, and the way combat rounds works is basically all of the player characters declare what they're going to do. The warden decides what the bad guys are going to do, and then okay. the warden basically figures out figures out what happens in what order based on what would be most what what seems what what seems to make most sense. There is an optional like initiative system that you could use if you wanted to, which is like basically it's a system from zero e, but um, just like basically the, the way this game works is everyone declares their actions and the warden and basically everything happens more or less at once. Cool. Um, but you know, if there's, if there's, if there's a question, the warden, if there's a question of like things needing to happen in a certain order, they generally do, or the, or the warden figures it out. Cool. So I'm going to firewall the knowledge then of what Banks is going to do. Um, the way that I understood where we were in the hall is that, um, the, the other one, this one still standing, um, uh, Riggs has advanced past him because the other one was the one that was shot, was knocked back the hall, down the hall. Um, and what Riggs was going to do once that flashlight started, started moving around was just turn and fire on on the one standing. So makes total that's sense. That's the knowledge firewall, which I absolutely love the notion that potentially Banks is like doing this really cool move and is like, hold on. <laughs> and meanwhile, <laughs> you know, pew pew. So let's see what happens. You don't have to die. You don't have to <laughs> basically. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to say that um, everyone's more or less on equal footing now, so no one has advantage or disadvantage. So this is going to be a straight up combat roll. That would be me first, yeah. Yep, that'd be you. Th yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go oh, ahead, Riggs. Just wanted to be, be sure. Nice. That is a hit. Uh, go ahead and do some damage. Which I believe for if you're still using the SMG, that's going to be 2d10. 2d10, and because we did start counting rounds, I think this is my last round. Okay. Ooh. Um, okay, that obliterates his armor, and... Um, yeah, you uh, you you've taken you've taken this guy down. Um, what does that look like? Can I ask for Banks to say what it looks like for Banks to do the scene? Oh, um, so Banks is down, um, jumps down, and is trying to position the smart rifle, and, um. She is saying, drop, and then before she can say it, suddenly the, the hallway is filled with this pink mist, and there's this blood spray all over Banks, because she's really in the wrong position. I'm sorry, if, uh, is, if this is still okay, right? If this is next? Okay. Um, and <laughs> then she looks over at Riggs and wipes her face uh, with her sleeve and says, um, he won't be answering any questions. I'm really sorry about that, Banks. We should have, we should coordinate better next time. Oh man, that was so awesome. Wow. I was expecting you guys to turn into such action heroes here. Okay. You have apparently uh, secured the scene. Um, you've taken out three mercenaries. Um, by the way, really, really good OSR style play of like using the environment to your advantage. Um, that, that, that was very, very cool. Um, and um, at this point, uh, you just kind of like hear and feel a. Um, you hear and feel a distant, a distant explosion. Seems to be coming from, like again, looking at the station map. Um, seems to be coming from the direction of where Health Tech would be. What do you do? So first, do we know this uh, other person's name? That's not Elbridge just so I can put them on the kill list. <laughs> <laughs> so I mark it off um, on my forearm. I don't the think their name ever came up. I've been keeping track of it on the list of black, of black shield mercenaries. No worries. You've taken three, you've taken three out. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, grab. Does, does Elbridge uh have a comm unit yep yep okay. all, like all of the bad guys each have a comm okay so grab that uh and grab the smart rifle okay um yeah both the armor for both of these the armor on both of these people are uh is is not use is not usable it's been shot up to the point where it's it's you know no it's no longer usable so that's how armor, that's how armor works. It basically it only works once, and then you have to have it repaired. And I think Banks will shout back into the room. Is anyone injured? We're okay. Yeah, surprisingly, no one got hit. I'm gonna walk over to the door to environmental control and tap on it and say, "Hey, Zeb, who's in there with you?" There is no response. 
Wait, was there a second a second life detected in I show you the bioscanner readout. Uh Oh, by the way, there's there's only one life. There's only there's only one life detected in there now. Oh. I think Olga takes it out like, oh, yeah, I was going to show you how to use this bioscanner earlier. See there, too. Oh. Hey, Seb? You in there? There is not a response. Well, shit. Are, are you able to discern what's on the other, what the other life form is on the other side of the store? The bioscanner, uh, only, de the bioscanner only detects number of life signs. It doesn't tell you what they are. Yeah. No, all we get is little dot life sign, one life sign. I see. Uh, what do you do? Oh, the, not... um, oh, I'm going to say like looking at the bio, looking at the bio sign, uh, looking at the bio scanner, that one life sign, um, seems to be moving away. Um, which is odd considering that Zeb at least told you there were no other exits out of that room. Should we attempt to get any information from Claymore while we have him uh, handcuffed in here? Before yeah, he's he's coming. Him? He's coming around now. That's a good idea. Is anyone? Oh, anyone else, is anyone going into the other room? I mean, the, we're, it, the we're, whatever, whatever, like whatever life sign you were detected is is like moving farther and farther away. There's does not and there. And to the point where it's kind of like at the edge of your scanner, and now it's not there anymore. I guess we could peek. Do it. Should we peek? <laughs> That's bad news. I don't, I, so, oh, go on. Either whatever that is got Seb, or Seb has left. <laughs> Riggs is going over like after we basically stripped the 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 baddies of like their comms and ammo and, and and weapons. He's while Olga and Banks are kind of doing their thing. This scene, you can see Riggs like trying to mind this door that was opened but now is busted up because the thing that's on Riggs' mind is the other people coming down like who's coming next and so Riggs like turns and is just like we got to get out of here and looks up like is it possible to go back the way we came is uh one thought that Riggs is, is having and so you know you see I look and point up there and you know I, I don't know Maybe we go, maybe we go, again, also because I didn't track it all, maybe we go where Zeb went. <laughs> you know. So other, so other things here, you're not too, so on the other end of this, so on the other end of this corridor, um, you know, there's like, a, you know, there's like a T-junction and the corridors go off, but there is also, um, there is also a freight elevator. According to this uh, map on the wall, that has right by health tech up to the docks. Correct. There's a freight elevator that goes from here to health tech and then from health tech up to the docks. So if we want to find out what these guys are doing in health tech or get to our ship, this seems like a straight shot. 
And Claymore is, and Claymore, the guy you've got, Claymore, the mercenary, you've got uh, handcuffed to this pipe. He is, he is start, he is starting to come around. And there's also like, what, what happened, what happened in that, what happened in the environmental control room? Question. So I guess my question is, uh, what, 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 what are you doing next? Olga, do you have anything that you can administer to Claymore here to make him more pliant in responding to questions? Uh, I, I'm a field bio researcher, not an interrogator. I, I don't deal with things both. that talk. <laughs> and Claymore is just, I mean, at this point, you know, he's coming around and he's looking at you and just says, how did a bunch of amateurs get the drop on me? You guys are really lucky. No, we're superior tacticians. What is it that uh, you are trying to get in lab seven? <sighs> um, yeah, we're, uh, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind just. I don't mind just telling you. Um, yeah, we were we were here to we were here to co to collect some like biomedical research data data subject matter. I don't know some like science some like science. We we were here to collect some science shit. Uh, people are paying us a hell of a lot of money to collect it. Who's paying you? Um, that I don't actually know. I don't ask that question. You'd have to ask Captain Gruber. Not that she'd tell you. <laughs> um, Banks turns to Riggs and Olga and Eddie. Any further questions? Okay. So, Banks will um, stuff the Santa hat back into uh, his mouth. Shall we okay. proceed to the freight elevator? Machinic, you good with that? Riggs, are you good with that? Okay. So you are not you're not checking out what's in environmental control. Okay. We haven't got any business going in environmental control, Mike. That's gonna be bad news. All I'm okay, gonna say just... there's nothing on the scanner. <laughs> Let's just take a peek. Should we take a peek just to see if there's right. in there? Just a peek. <laughs> yes, you I got it, them to go Olga. in. Uh, <laughs> I've got my sample collection kit ready. <laughs> well, you might actually want that. Um, so, um, so you open up the door to environmental control, and uh, you see Zeb lying on the floor in a pool of lying on the floor uh, in a, in a pool of blood. Um, and there is. Um, now, there is a trail that leads from Zeb's body, um, like down a corridor, like up the wall into, oh, and there's, there is an open, there's an open ventilation hatch that's just kind of like swinging open. And this like trail of, well, at first you thought it was blood, but it looks like it might be kind of the wrong, it looks a little Looks a little more purple than blood should be, um, but yeah, it, it like goes up the wall, um, across the ceiling into the ventilation system, in, into the ventilation duct. Briggs just shakes his head. I think I am going to ask everyone to please. Make a fear save. Uh, 
Oh, and because you have an advent because you have an Android nearby, um, Olga and Riggs, you must make your fear save at disadvantage. You're welcome. Um, is and fear that's different than panic. Yeah, well, this, uh, yeah, exactly. So this is a fear save. So basically, you want to basically you just want to roll. You want to roll your fear or less on on percentage dice. Okay. If you fail your fear save, then uh, you. Roll. If you fail a fear save, you then uh, you then take a stress and must make a panic check. Okay. And we'll talk about panic checks if anyone fails their fear save. Sorry, is this a D hundred? This is going to be dear, yeah, D hundred. You're looking at your fear save. You want to get uh, your fear to to pass. You need to roll your fear or less. Uh, Olga did not make a fear save. Uh, looks like oh, Banks made it by one. Riggs makes it. You know, I am going to have Eddie make, I'm going to have Eddie make his fear save as well. Ooh, Eddie makes it. Fantastic. Okay, so um, it looks like... Um, Wait a sec. Did everybody make it at disadvantage, though? No, oh, I, right. Disadvantage. I like disadvantage. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Dis I forgot about disadvantage. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. I ruined everybody's. Day. It was a sweet, sweet two, but I'm really worried about Eddie because that's a two-two. Is that a crit? yeah? Uh, well, I mean, a twenty-two would have made would have it. Been a success. That would have been a that would have been a success, but um, his second one was his second one was a miss. Yeah. So it looks like um, okay. So yeah, it does look like everyone looks like everyone with the exception of your android. Um, failed their fear save, which is fine. That means uh, take one stress. I'm going to mark a stress for, where's the stress track? Any is at stress four. And uh, everyone that must now make a panic check. And the way panic check works is, um, and this is this is something new for for Mothership First Edition. It is introducing a a D twenty roll. So the way panic so the way panic works is you want to roll is uh, you roll a D twenty. You uh, if you roll over your current stress, you don't panic. If you roll your current stress or less, you then look at the number you rolled on your D twenty, and we will consult the panic table. And it's the way the panic table, I'm just going to talk a little bit about game mechanics here. Uh, the way the panic table is written is actually kind of interesting. The lower you roll, the, the lower you roll on your, on your D20 on your panic check, the, uh, so the, what happens gets progressively uh, like worse the higher you roll. So if you roll a one on your panic check, yeah, you panic. You take a panic effect, but it actually doesn't. It, it's actually, it's actually kind of advent, advent. It's actually slightly advantageous. You're like panicking. You like have nerves of steel, so you think you have. Well, um, whereas um, the higher you roll, the um, and and if you do panic, it's it gets progressively worse. But um, so in some sense, you want to roll. You want so it, it. We've almost got like a blackjack mechanic going. You want to roll. Uh, you want to roll high, but you don't want to bust because if you bust, it's bad. So let's have uh, okay. So Olga got a Olga rolled a fifteen, which is higher than her, uh, which is higher than her current stress, which is four. So that is so that's fine. Uh, Riggs, you want to roll? Uh, Riggs got a six. Riggs's current stress is five, so you do not panic. And I am going to roll for Eddie. And Eddie got a nineteen, which is higher than his current stress, so he does not. He also does not panic. So yeah, as stress increases, um, your chances of panicking um, increase uh, if you fail your fear save. Um, 
and um, you're more and as your as your stress increases, the the panic effect that you would be subject to gets more and more severe. One of the panic, uh, looks like like nineteen on the panic check is heart attack, which is basically you permanently lose one of your wounds. Um, twenty on the panic check is basically you freak out to the point where you you've lost the character. The character is now an NPC. But that only happens if your stress is nineteen or twenty. <clears throat> you can only get you can only get that. You can only get the I panic so much that I lose my mind and the character is now the G, is now a GM character. That only happens if your stress is 20 and you roll a 20. So I think it's I think it's a really interesting mechanic. And something to shoot for. Yep. So looking at the time, um, I think this is actually uh, I, I think this is actually a good note to end on that there's some kind of weird gooey there's some kind of in addition to there being mercenaries wandering around shooting the place up, uh, they seem to have they seem to have released or there there seems to be some kind of like space monster also on this also on this ship. So I think we're gonna. So I think we're gonna end it on that scene of like the goo, like you look, look looking at the goo that goes up and into the. And I think that I think the grate that's open is still swinging a little bit, as like some of this like crimson goo is just kind of like drips off of it. And that is where we are going to end this session. Uh, thank you for playing, folks. I had a blast. This was really a lot of fun. This is much more action hero-y than I thought it was going to go, but that seems also pretty genre appropriate. Um, I'd like to do a little debrief after. Uh, I'd like to do a little debrief if uh, we've got a few minutes to do that. I prefer to do that off camera, so I am going to end the recording here. Um, if anyone was watching, thank you for watching, and um, uh, I hope you all come back for session three when that happens, uh, a week from a, re a week from when this recording is made. So thanks, folks. Have a good night.